<laughs> okay, so now we're going to talk about the acupuncture meridians and the acupuncture points. I'll give you a uh, sort of overview, talk about the history, uh, limited, limited history, uh, a couple ways of maybe thinking about how it was uh, stumbled upon. We'll talk about what it is exactly that the meridians do. We'll talk about how your internal organs have a relationship with the meridians in your body. Uh, we'll talk about how chi flows in your body. And we'll end this segment of it by talking about how we learn how to equate the surfaces of our body with the, uh, the meridians and the yin and yang, mm -hmm. which will be very good. Meridians are also called channels or vessels or other things. Uh, <clears throat> they are conduits through which your internal energy flows or your chi flows in your body. Uh, you have 12 what they call major channels in your body and you have eight uh, what they call extraordinary channels in your body. And then you just have thousands and thousands of minor channels. Uh, <clears throat> every molecule in your body is touched by an acupuncture meridian of some kind. So it's uh, completely uh, ubiquitous inside your body. Along these channels or conduits or meridians, you've got specific points where you can access the chi inside that channel. They're called the acupuncture points or the acupressure points or maybe even just acupressure. Sometimes people call it that way. And when you, when you press on or needle or work on these points, you create physical and energetic changes in the patient's body. Uh, and by and large, <clears throat> we've had enough time of practice with these points that we have a good sense of what they do and how they're used. And so pretty much the, you know, we know when you press here, it does this. When you press here, it does this. When you press here, it does this. We have a good sense of what all that is. And then we'll also look at the internal organs. And we'll do four organs in each of the first three classes. So we take all three classes, you get all 12 organs. Um, <clears throat> and the organs, have a relationship and correspond with the channel, but they're different things. They're related, but they're different. So you've got, for instance, a lung organ and you have a lung channel. Then they're related, but they're not the same thing. Um, th these 12 internal organs that we have are actually the basis of uh, anatomy and physiology in Chinese medicine, at least the Chinese medicine that I practice. Um, as Kate alluded to, there's other systems of Chinese medicine and uh, I can't speak about them because I don't know. Good. These are your 12 organs. The lung, large intestine, stomach, spleen, heart, small intestine, urinary bladder, kidney, pericardium, San Gio, gallbladder, and liver. Most of those will be familiar to you from your previous anatomy training, but there is one up there that should look kind of weird. San Gio. San Gio. The San Gio. That's a special organ that we have that you guys don't have in your medicine. Um, I won't go into it in too, too, too much detail, except that the San Jiao is not something that you can cut the body open and find. It's really a, a collection of processes in your body that it refers to uh, just sort of a, a more physiological function and not a physical organ. Uh, and it's a way of thinking about the torso as being divided into three parts. So you've got an upper part, you've got a middle part, you've got a lower part. These are your three jiaos. Jiao translates as burner, something like that. So we call it the triple heater, the triple burner. Um, and we'll learn more about that in Trinon 3. <coughs> One day. We'll mention two possible ways that all this stuff was discovered. One, one historical thought is that primitive or ancient man found that they had sensitive spots on their body and that uh, when they were oppressed or when they were poked or when they were prodded or when they were stimulated in some way that they did something and over time uh, they became organized <coughs> into, into uh, like patterns that, that were related in the body and from that they sussed out that there must be channels or conduits where the energy flows. That's one idea about how these came about. Uh, the other way they talk about it possibly is that they discovered the channels first. Like perhaps, perhaps they were doing massage and they found like trigger points or referred sensations or something like that. They press here, but they feel it moving down. So, oh, there must be this channel here somehow. Or maybe they were doing meditation and Qigong 
and they were able to see energy flowing through the body in their mind's eye. Maybe that's kind of how they discovered it. I'm not sure exactly. But then over time, once they sort of saw that the, your energy had these predictable pathways, then they discovered points along them and it did certain things. And in fact, this is the theory what they call the channel first theory of what looks like it's the most supported like in the actual evidence from things that they being out of the ground. So I'm not really taking a stand either way. I just <laughs> I mention it. All right, what do the meridians do actually then? Well, one thing that they do is they explain how chi and blood are transported in your body. They explain how your body is linked as one homogeneous whole unit. Uh, in fact, sort of explains how homeostasis works because you've got all these conduits of your energy flowing. Uh, protects the body. Uh, before a disease or pathogen can penetrate deep, it's got to actually blast through your meridians to get into your body. Um, it explains how uh, your body responds to dysfunction uh, and also how, for instance, we can use body work or needles to transmit chi from one place to the other, to kind of what, the, what they do. They are also the conduits for your internal organs to move their chi through the body as well. If you can breathe well, it's because your lung chi is able to move to where it needs to so that your lungs work, as an example. They also explain how your internal organs are connected to each other. So even in Western medicine, if I say, well, how are your heart and your lungs connected? You might say, well, that's like our cardiovascular system. So we have the same idea that the organs are connected and do things together. Liver and gallbladder in Chinese medicine work together. Spleen and stomach work together. We call that your digestive system. We kind of explain all that. 